The following example is one of my favorites in the ending because it contains so many of the critical skills you need to master if you want to become a grandmaster or just improve in chess in general. Um, it's an all-time classic and, uh, and well, let's get into it. It's Boris Baski against uh, Pia Kramnik. I think it's the only game that uh, great Boris actually won against Pia. They played a, an awful lot of draws. Uh, and we will we will start from the beginning. I was just uh, going to, to show you the, the beginning position. Uh, Boris is white. And the reason why this game is so good is, first of all, you get to know, uh, learn how to handle a space advantage. Uh, second, you get to know how to handle the bishop pair against a black position without any apparent weaknesses and then we have a transformation of advantages when to exchange rooks when to keep rooks how many rooks to exchange and so on so it's a really good example and it's it's much more difficult than it looks and it also shows that boris is maybe one of the most underestimated players of all time uh, probably because he he was beaten rather badly by Fischer, uh, but he was a very, very strong player and uh, who, who had, well, he was very good with the initiative and so on, but his technique was also great and he was also a good defender. So I think uh, studying his game is, is, is rather cool. Of course, he's, he's, uh, the memory of, of Boris is a little bit uh, blemished by that he made a lot of uh, quick draws in the 80s and was not really into fighting chess. And with, which is uh, the way we play today, where nobody will take a draw like, like without a fight. That's just ridiculous. And it was ridiculous back then, but it was normal. Anyway, uh, this system is not bad for, bli uh, for white. I think uh, black should have probably played d5 early on to avoid uh, this setup. Uh, so in, in this position after d3, I think maybe even here d5 is best. Uh, but d3 is not bad. We can definitely play that move. D6. And here we see White's idea. Uh, he basically wants to build a strong center with D4. Uh, and we have already discussed this many times on GM Talks. When you have like uh, these two pawns here, you almost always have a slight advantage due to uh, slightly more space. It's not a big advantage, but it is an advantage. And it's in the, in the hands of very strong players. It can be enough to win the game. And this, of course, is Black's idea, uh, putting a knight on an active square. Uh, if, you, if you like going here, which some French players would probably do, then I think white is instantly clearly better. The space advantage is simply uh, too much. You play, I think you play something like h4 and starting to attack on the black squares on the king side. Knight e4 is, of course, a much better move. Uh, Due to the pressure on this square, it's not so easy to get rid of this knight, so this move is necessary. Um, and here uh, we see the, the, the problem with the, with the knight on, on uh, e4 is that it can be pushed here. And by the way, at this moment, uh, white is threatening this move, and after this move, this move, trapping the knight here. This is a very common uh, square for a knight to get trapped. So be aware of that when you put your knight on e4 and be aware of trapping it when your opponent does. Um, putting on more pressure and of course white could take on e4 uh, but it would not be good. Uh, black would get tremendous uh, compensation on the white squares. You can almost see it with your just... Uh, anyway, this was not the theme of the, the game. Uh, bishop e3. Uh, protecting the pawn on d4, f5, protecting the knight, f3, pushing the knight away, and it goes here, and and in this position, we can say that white is definitely slightly better. It's not a big advantage, but it is an advantage. He has more space, and you can say that this bishop is bad, but as we have uh, talked a little bit about, uh, bad bishop protects good pawns, and uh, and in general, these positions are now considered uh, clearly better for white, which is why the French is not in such whole held in such high esteem anymore. Uh, this is is it makes sense. Uh, there is a juicy square uh, here. 
on, on c4 and it opens for the bishop uh, to, to control some white squares on the queen side. Um, and here uh, black goes on to play this move and this might not be the best move. Uh, I'm not sure this is the best move. It looks like this is black's bad bishop, but it's also a good bishop because it protects uh, this pawn and it will not be bad forever. There will be squares for this bishop. So it's not so easy to, to just play around it. So giving up a bishop without sort of uh, getting anything in return is maybe a little high price. In, in uh, Earlier, everybody thought that, oh, just get rid of that bishop and you will be fine. And then uh, came along the short variation of the Karakan and people realized, ah, it's not so simple. Because if you don't have a white squared bishop, then uh, playing f6 makes the white square awfully weak on the king's side and suddenly you don't have any counterplay. Okay. Uh, rook to open file. Uh, bishop here, protecting this one. And also... Um, uh, eyeing this one and we see that it basically the bishop has nothing to do here so it is transferred to more uh, green uh, postures whatever it's called knight here knight here attacking this pawn and maybe uh, black should play something like this now keeping the queens on hoping and and this is something you should notice that when when white's uh, kingside position is weakened like it is with these pawns advanced here then it's maybe easier to get some counterplay going against it and you might think about keeping the queens on because of that okay taking here is not bad bad and uh, of course the knight is uh, is threatening on e6 so bishop g5 is forced and we after king f2 uh, again threading there we we have this position that we started out with so what can we say here we can say that uh, black has two knights white has two bishops white has more space um, basically it's this pawn versus uh, this pawn that sort of uh, determines it and it's always said that knight prefers close positions and that's probably not always correct. It depends on if the knights can find a good foothold somewhere. It needs some sort of an outpost to be good. And if you can push the knights back, then they are not very happy. Uh, knights are not very good at uh, controlling a mass of pawns just rolling forward. So here, uh, it's I would say that white definitely has a, 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 a clear advantage. It, but it's but black has no weaknesses and two knights and uh, good pieces and so on so it's a long way from winning but it's a kind of game uh, position that if you want to become a gm you should win sometimes not every time because i don't think you can win this every time especially against a very strong defender but in in general you should have good winning chances when white in this kind of positions uh, taking here and here comes an instruction moment how many rooks do you want to have on the board? And the answer is, uh, normally you said that if you have some sort of advantage, you want to exchange pieces because that will sort of expand your advances. But here the bishops are definitely better with the rooks on the board with one rook. So taking with the rook is with the bishop is uh, is actually kind of smart. It's also make this uh, g5 move uh, not very uh, smart now, maybe just due to just h4 and white is, is, is ready to, to poke a hole in the king side. So uh, black take, white takes back with the bishop, which is, looks a bit counterintuitive. I think he, he was uh, thinking here and, and black would play something like uh, here next and, and it's not that great. So, so bishop rook here, bishop there, a knight here and king is used because the, you want to use the king actively in the ending and this doesn't look so bad for black but the problem is white has a clear plan of ex advancing the pawns on both sides of the board uh, increasing his space advantage so that's his uh, target number one increase your space advantage and make sure these two uh, knights does not 
have places to sit where they can be active. So they, they are allowed to be uh, to sit somewhere where they are passive, but not where they're active and you have to sort of whole, whole, uh, look at them all the time. So, uh, so, so first of all, you want to get rid of this knight on c6. So that's uh, one of the plans behind this move. And more space is added. And notice that, the, that these bishops here do an excellent job of, of keeping control over everything on, on the green side. That's what a bishop pair is very good at. Um, knight is coming to b6 and c4. And he, of course, exchanging the white squared bishop will completely change the picture. Then black would be more than fine. But a5 is, of course, uh, the idea behind the thing. You put your pawns on the bishop that could be bad. Uh, it might be strong in the future, but at the moment, you're uh, you're ready for it to not be good. And this is, is of course, white stream scenario. And you might think that black maybe should have played something like, uh, oops, like a6 at some point here. Um, to not here, but at some point, <laughs> to to avoid uh, to to exchange some pawns, but that would would make it clear that the rook and bishops are better than the knights because the knight would just be defending and white will have some decent attacking chances. So black is trying to keep the position closed, but of course he is squeezed at the moment, and it will not be easy to uh, to break out. And white. And one of the things you need here is what uh, Guns N' Roses call patience, just a little more patience, and you just keep trying to uh, to push the opponent back. And this is a very typical uh, move, uh, making sure the bishop operates on uh, both sides of the board. Black is uh, realized that okay, his idea is basically to keep the rook here and then let these two knights defend the king side. The problem is it's not so easy against bishops because bishops can uh, attack from afar. And here comes the uh, black squared bishop. And please notice that these bishops keep this rook out of the c-file. So there's no nothing to attack, nothing to see here. Uh, move along. And uh, and to this move is to take this square so that white can free this bishop to move, for instance, here. Oops, that was not the correct, here. And take. And uh, here black realized that, oh, he would, of course, like to keep his structure intact. Uh, the problem with this move is this move. By the way, notice in this situation there is a positional trap. Uh, you could say, ah, I can make a small combination here. The problem is after this move, it's very annoying that you will end up with the wrong bishop uh, at the wrong time. And, uh, and I think black is already better here. So, but g4 is a problem. Opening this uh, diagonal, probably making sure this rook will have an entry point and it's very hard to keep sort of the flood inside with against bishops and something like this is very 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 pleasant and uh, this this is aligned by Kurt Hansen in chess space um, it goes something like this oh no this is also a good move though so here something like this And this is a very typical line uh, where uh, that where you you transform your uh, your space advantage into a winning rook ending. Probably uh, you could take on on e f7 and play rook f6 and take and take and these pawns will uh, decide the game. Uh, okay, so black took with the knight. That was not. The plan, but it does attack uh, this one, and it does uh, make the knight more active. And of course, something like uh, this would be a disaster for white. That will again sit with the wrong bishop. But you do have a king, and he can defend the pawn. And uh, notice that one of the ideas now is to go here, and again maybe go g4, and and so on. Uh, there are many ideas. 
And still, it doesn't look so bad for black, but it's in these kind of positions, the, the loss is just, just not very far away. For instance, at this moment, white is threatening this move, um, followed by if take, then you would take here, and this move would win this night. Does that make sense? That was a lot of arrows. Anyway, so black defense against this. Rook to you on. Might be ready for this move. You want to keep the pawn on h6. And uh, and black, white has, has, has a lot of uh, time. There's no need to hurry. Going here, maybe switching plan. And here comes White's uh, first idea, is to play g4 and take with the king to keep this pawn here and keeping this knight out of this square. Yeah, and this is an interesting uh, moment in the game. Uh, and it also shows why, uh, because I think Black was probably starting to think, I can draw this. It's not so bad. Uh, I have a great knight on g5. My king is covering h6. I have an active rook on f8, and so on and so on. And at the moment, I'm trading this, and I will push the king back. And uh, there will be nothing to see here. And then comes, and this is uh, what we call the transformation of advantages take getting rid of the the great bishop in order to uh, to take over the c file and the timing is of course perfect uh, because this move is not possible due to this one is hanging so black will white will just take it and at, at the same time attacking here and so on so that would not be very funny um, so you have to take back with the rook and boop and suddenly white takes over the c-file, and uh, and this knight is still passive, there's nothing uh, here, and, and and it's kind of annoying. Uh, we also see that, um, that the thing is, if white gets to play this move, then he will, and, and black plays this move, then we will follow up with this move, and <laughs> and it's not possible to get rid of the, the, the rook on the c-file. So black plays b6, uh, not allowing any targets to sit on white squares, which makes a lot of sense because uh, this, in the other situation, this bishop might exchange, uh, sacrifice itself. This, but this does leave this as a horrible weakness, and white does have a plan that sometimes he can put his rook here, or he can go this way, and it will be uh, annoying again. Rook f7, king e3, uh, maybe f4 is coming, and it's uh, all uh, under all circumstances avoiding any kind of knight uh, a3 checks, just stepping out of the checks. That's a new weakness. Rook down here, knight here, and uh, please notice the following move when the knight. Just uh, retreated. You play f4 because it can't go back now, and it's sort of pushed back. And this is what you do with knights: you keep pushing them back. Just, just let them uh, get pushed back. Knight here. Still, black doesn't have any apparent weaknesses, but this one is starting to look a little bit weak, and it's attacked this way. And another great move: rook here attacking uh, this pawn is, and thereby uh, leaving this knight alone. And this rook can't move either because it's covering the knight. So king d6 is uh, only move and black is basically left with these two moves uh, back and forth. Uh, of course, uh, I, I don't think uh, Pia was very uh, optimistic anymore. And, and of course, white has <laughs> a very unpleasant plan. It's uh, quite simple. And so, uh, what to do? 
yeah, you get desperate, right? And white has a lot of time, so you just play this move first, not allowing any kind of uh, kamikaze uh, counterattack. And yeah, what to do? Um, you have to, to time it right so that the king is on d6 when you play king h4. So not to allow knight d6 check. And h4, this is a uh, Sukzwang. So h4, take, and the pawn immediately uh, uh, joins in the quest to have most space. And, and here uh, white can actually finish the game in splendid fashion with bishop takes d5, e takes, e6. Uh, after bishop d5, uh, black resigned. The rook ending is absolutely hopeless. So to sum it up, white did keep one rook, kept the bishop pair, pushed the knights back, uh, created first more space on the queen side, then more space on the king side, created a weakness on the king side, then exchanged one of the knights to get to uh, this, uh, get the, uh, take over the c file or win the h pawn, then push black to more passivity, and uh, in the end, uh, won a pawn by Sukswang. So, a great example, and it's much easier said than done. To play like this uh, it takes a great player like boris spassky to to actually do this uh, this was gm talks thank you for watching